Hey there, I'm Joshua Bardwell, and I just want to take 30 seconds of your time before we get into the video in case someone has stumbled across this video randomly and doesn't realize what the context is. This is a playlist of videos teaching you how to build a FPV, first person view freestyle or racing drone from start to finish. If you've stumbled in in the middle, Go down to the video description, there's a playlist link, start at the beginning of the playlist and work your way through. If you are working your way through this video, I want to remind you that there is a Discord server, a Discord chat server uh, for Quad Camp Online. There's a channel over there where we provide support uh, for the people who are working through this project. If you have any questions, you can ask them down in the YouTube comments, absolutely, but if you need a little bit more real-time help, you maybe will get better luck over in the Discord server. Link in the video description. I also want to remind you, thanks to Rotor Riot for helping make this project a reality. And if you are thinking of working your way through this project, you can get all of the equipment for, to build the quadcopter in just one credit card swipe from the Rotor Riot store. Yeah, you can buy the stuff elsewhere as well. One piece here, one piece there. Pay too much for shipping. Accidentally buy the wrong thing. You get it all. And there's a link to that down in the video description. On with the video. Now we come to the part of the build where it all falls apart. Soldering. A whole lot of you guys are really eager to get in the air and never took the time to learn to solder. And this is not the place where you're gonna learn to solder. Of all the things I can teach you and how to put this quad together, it's a whole nother topic to teach you how to solder from start to finish. So all I can say is if you're struggling with soldering, stop <laughs> and figure out what's wrong. Watch some 101 videos on, on YouTube, figure out because when soldering is done right, it goes pretty easy. Um, but I'm going to give you some tips as to how to sort of stack the odds in your favor. Number one, be using leaded solder. Don't use lead-free solder. It makes your life a lot harder. There's no risk, unless you eat leaded solder, there's no risk of lead exposure or anything like that. Don't worry. You want to be using leaded solder. And the best solder to use is 6337 alloy this is 6040. That's okay, but 6337 alloy solder is the best. Um, use a soldering iron that is temperature controlled. If you have one of those big honking 60 watt Radio Shack irons that isn't temperature controlled, that's not going to do a great job for you. The iron that I'm using is the Hakko 888D. Uh, it is a it's about a $80 iron, and if you've got the money for it, that's great. If you're a beginner, there are irons uh, at a much lower price point. Um, like the Aouye, A-O-U-Y-E line is pretty good bargain. You can find them pretty much the world over. But you want to be using a temperature-controlled iron. The tip that I use is about a 2 millimeter chisel tip. I think that's good for general purpose use. If you've got a really fine, like, conical pencil tip, you're gonna have a hard time doing, especially the bigger motor pads and stuff. That's good for very fine work. Um, if you have a great big chunky bevel tip, you're gonna find it really hard to do some of the finer soldering later. I think this is a good general purpose tip. But my point is this, if you are struggling, if your solder isn't sticking, if your joints look cruddy, please don't continue. Don't just struggle. You're going to damage your board. You're going to maybe get the quad in the air, but then it's going to crash and you won't know why. Unfortunately, taking the time to at least learn to become minimally proficient with soldering, it's so worth it. And I know it's hard to take that time when you're, when you're eager to get in the air. Enough, about, enough said about that. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to solder up the motor wires to these pads. And these are big heavy pads, so I'm going to use a fairly high temperature. A lot of people say I run my temperatures too high and that you can run them lower, but I find I get better results running it a little higher. So I'm going to set this soldering iron at, let's say, 800 degrees Fahrenheit. I think that's about 400-ish Celsius, more or less. And I'm going to do what's called tin the pads. When I tin the pads, I'm just going to put the smallest amount of solder to kind of just cover the pad. And I'm going to touch and get some solder. And then I should see it flow onto the pad. Touch, a little solder in. And I want you to see how the solder just flowed out to the edges of the pad. That means that heat is flowing well into the pad. And that's what you want to see. Touch, a little solder, 
and you see the solder flow to the edges of the pads. It's probably a little more than I needed. Just like that. Oh, didn't quite get to the edges of the pad there. Just hit that one just a little more. That's good. That's okay. That's fine. I've bridged this a little bit. You don't want to do that. If you bridge them, you can just go in with your soldering iron and kind of dab it away. And you should be fine. You do not want any connection between the pads. Okay. Now that the pads are tinned, I'm going to prep the wires. Now the motor wires are going to go, they're going to lay along the arm of the quad and then they're going to come over here and they're going to get soldered to the pads. And there's three wires for each motor and they're just going to come straight out and go one, two, three wires, one, two, three to the pads from the outside in. Um, and you're going to want to, you're going to need to cut these to length. You can see they're way longer than they need to be, but be a little generous. Give yourself some slack. So I'm going to hold the motor wires down and I could just go like this, you see, and have like no slack, but I'm going to just give myself a little bit of extra. It's okay if the little bit of extra wire is tucked up in here. I'm going to come in with my diagonal cutter. I'm going to just figure out approximately where that needs to get cut. And I'm going to come in and cut it like so. After I cut it, I'm going to strip it. Now I use the diagonal cutter to strip the end of the wire, but if you have like a wire, a wire stripping tool like this, you can use it. After stripping, I'm going to twist and then I'm going to tin to tin the wire. I'm going to touch the wire with the soldering iron tip and I'm going to get just a little bit of solder on the tip. That's going to help the heat flow into the wire. And then I'm going to add just a little more solder so that the tip ends up nice and shiny. Just like so. And I think about Maybe two to three millimeters of exposed wire seems about right. Any more than that, you're just going to want to snip it shorter with your diagonal cutters. When you do this, there's going to be a little bit of spatter. Don't tin the wire over the top of the ESC, okay? Because then if you get a little bit of spatter or a little bit of a blob, it's going to drop on the ESC and it could damage something. So just do that over your workbench however is convenient. Here comes the second wire. So the first wire went here, second wire is going to go here, third wire is going to go there. And again, I'm just going to give myself a little bit of extra slack in case. So the thing is, you might make a mistake. You might need to cut it off and solder it again. At that point, having left yourself a little bit of extra wire is going to really help you out. Just a little bit of solder on the tip to help move heat between the tip and the wire. And a little bit of solder on the wire. And you should see that the wire soaks up that solder and is nice and shiny and silver when you're done. If you have a little ice cream cone, uh, like an ice cream cone, soft serve cone, little tip there, that means that not enough heat got into the wire and the wire didn't really soak up the solder. And here's the third wire. We're going to just, that's about where it needs to be. And I'm going to just give myself just a little more slack here. Now what I suggest you do is prep the three wires from the first motor and then go ahead and solder them down to the ESC as I'm about to show you how to do. And then if you did anything wrong in the wire prep, you'll be able to fix it on the subsequent motors. As you become a more experienced builder, you may decide to prep all the wires, then solder all the wires. But at least in the beginning, figure out your mistakes early and don't repeat them. Now I want to remind you, we've got three wires coming out of the motor. One, two, three, like so. And I'm going to solder them. One, two, three, like so. If you don't get that exactly right, it's okay. That's not critical and we can fix it later. In fact, it doesn't actually matter how you wire them up. 
If you wire them up one way, the motor will spin clockwise. If you wire them up a different way, the motor will skip in counterclockwise. And we can always fix that in software later. But in order for your quad to turn out exactly like mine, try and do them exactly the same as me. And it looks a little nicer if they're straight through and not flipped over. So I'm gonna just start with the uh, this wire and I'm gonna take it to that pad. I'm gonna use these tweezers to help me hold it down. And get it lined up how you're gonna want it. And then I'm gonna apply heat such that the whole joint flows and becomes solid. Actually. Be careful not to melt this plastic standoff while you're working. Just like so. At this point, the first motor is soldered up, and if you want to, you can dress these wires a little bit just by kind of squeezing them into place. You're going to want to make sure that this screw hole stays clear because the standoff is going to go there. We can just put those down, and my personal choice is just to use a little bit of electrical tape to hold them down. There you go. So that's the first motor done. Now I'm going to do the other three. The three. <laughs> the exact same way. And that's going to bring us to the end of this step of the build. Check the playlist down in the video description to go to the next step. Or if you're lucky, it'll even autoplay for you. See you there.